Bangalore in 2015. It has six years of experience in the financial sector. Um, four years as uh, equity research analyst with Credit Suisse in London. Uh, he uh, returned to India in 2009 and joined uh, 2 IAM in as director soon after he returned. And he has been running the CAT product at 2 IAM for the past three years. Uh, you might have, actually I, I found out about him through a news article in the Hindu. I don't know if any of you read the article, but um, if you did, you would have known that he took CAT in. 2011 and 2012 and secured 100 percentile in, in both years. I guess you just did it for fun. Um, so he's currently involved in a project to teach math to school, school students from class 6 to class 8. Um, I'm sure you have seen the bio that I circulated. He hated banking but took it up as, the, as his first job. It paid well. But he has always liked teaching, so he ended up in the education sector. And he's very keen to reach out to school students and build a product that helps them. Um, invite Rajesh to give his presentation. Uh, it's a good feeling. Uh, I'll try to keep this in simple modules. And, uh, I'm going to pick this on what uh, I would have liked to hear when I was the receiving it, which is not too far. I graduated in 2001, so I'm still from this millennium, not that old. So I'll pick this on what I would have liked to hear. Uh, but I'll, I'll keep it reasonably open-ended because I'm, I, I'm pretty certain you might have something else which you have in mind. So I'll keep the initial part short, and then if you have any questions, any particular queries, we can we can work around that and, and, then, and then answer answer those questions. I'm going to break this into three parts. Uh, I know most of you are interested in do, doing knowing about uh, what competitive exams are all about, what they look for. How you should prepare for them. What is the what is the? There's, there's one tangible takeaway. If it's going to help you crack a cat or a GMAT, that's probably one important thing you have in mind. Uh, but from based on my interactions with uh, with with students, which which we which I teach, whom I teach to, I see that a lot of them are more unclear about what does MBA thing means. What is the idea? What do you do? What do you learn? Really learn in an MBA? Uh, and what is the what are you looking for when you want to do an MBA? And I'm going to touch on what you get when you get into the financial sector, because the financial sector is very new in India for all entire legacy. Uh, the financial sector, which uh, our parents knew, and the financial sector kind of job that you're going to get into are dramatically different. One is uh, uh, one was very traditional retail banking, another now the, the more high fancy jobs are all in investment banking. I want to touch upon what this thing means because it's uh, it's considered cool, and I want to see if I can, I can just tell you what this job entails. To start with, what does an MBA mean? What do you what do you end up learning? You, you, you in, in terms of subject knowledge, you learn a little bit about finance, a little bit about marketing, a uh, little bit about ops, a little bit about human resource management. It, it equips you to um, analyze a business and probably run one. So if you, if you want to be an entrepreneur, then an MBA is going to help. Uh, but but what if you're, if you're looking to be in the job segment? How is it? extraordinarily different from being a tech person. It's, it's not. It's, it's, there's no, no fancy strings. It's more a common sense course than, uh, than engineering is. Uh, there's no, nothing fancy to a little bit of accounting or, or marketing. You, you should have the ability to sell an idea, a concept, or whatever you start, wherever you're working. At some point, you'll have to sell your idea, your CV, slightly differently. You need to know how to package yourself. Uh, that bit is what you learn in, in, in marketing. Uh, the, 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 the most tricky part or the, the part which a lot of people grapple with very early on is uh, do, uh, when this MBA decision comes into place, do I want to do MBA marketing, MBA finance, MBA ops? I just want to explore that one myth. Uh, there is no such thing as MBA ops, MBA finance, MBA marketing. Most of these things are brands that are created by these colleges. So right now when you're doing your engineering, completely forget about that. It doesn't matter. It's not like BTEC civil engineering and BTEC electrical engineering. There's no clear distinction. I, I call myself a guy who did MBA finance and ops, uh, but it is it is actually illegal to tell yourself that you have put on your CV that you have majored in finance or ops if you graduate from any of the IAMs. Uh, there is no such thing as main, majoring or minoring. It's a bunch of electives. I took one more finance elective than marketing, so I call myself a finance major. And so my first job was as a sales and marketing guy. Uh, I my second job was in, in a back office, so I there is the, the distinctions between finance, marketing, ops, HR are very 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 low. Keep that in mind. But the great many of you when you're taking your decisions, 
uh, there is pressure to decide what you want to do, what kind of MBA you want to do. Forget about that. You, your, your main objective right now should be to clear this exam, uh, get going, get cracking, make sure that you reach the next level and then start from there. Uh, you, you'll need to have a clearer understanding of what you want to do to clear the uh, personal interview stage. We'll come to that. But at the starting level, don't put this pressure on. You need to know whether you want to become an MBA finance guy or an MBA ops guy, MBA marketing guy. Forget about that because I hear a lot of students coming back to me saying, uh, I think I might be interested in finance, uh, but uh, my profile might choose suit marketing. There's no such thing. Forget about it. That's a decision which you practically do not need to worry about. This is not a specialization. So completely forget about that. Uh, in, in terms of this finance thing, I get a lot of queries on finance. I just wanted to touch on what is this finance job? What is the financial sector? See, 10 years ago, there was practically no investment finance in India. It was, it was extremely unorganized. You, you invested in, uh, with, with, if you bought insurance, you bought it from LIC. If you dabbled in the stock market, you did it out of your own volition with a, with a neighborhood broker. And there's nothing beyond that. But as the economy grew, there was more people who wanted to keep their savings in something beyond fixed deposits or real estate. And, and, and that industry took off uh, from 2000 onwards. So great part of what you hear about banking now is investment banking, which is money management. And there are two, three components to it, which you should know. One is uh, classic investment banking, which is which deals with mergers and acquisitions, where one company buys another company. Two is investment banking, which is called research and investment, equity research and equity sales and marketing, where you invest in, where you discuss dabble in stocks. You are either a money manager or you are a research analyst. One of these two categories. Right? So you should have a broad idea of what this investment banking animal really means. And so, uh, you you, you should, I see a lot of uh, students who are engineering students who want to get into the banking industry and investment banking industry uh, with close to zero idea of what it really entails. And so I want to make sure that you have a reasonable idea of what this means. Uh, I'm not going to focus more on that. I want to focus a lot on competitive exams. That's what you come to here. But I want you to have two things. If you have any uh, doubts or you want some more clarity on what this banking industry means, we can discuss it offline at the end of the session. Uh, have that before you pick your job or your career or your options. Second thing, when you're doing, taking a choice on MBA, completely forget about MBA, marketing, finance, ops, all of that. It doesn't matter. It practically is irrelevant. Don't bother yourself with that decision now. In most cases, if you're going to do, take that decision, if you're joining a two-year MBA course, you'll be choosing your first elective uh, a good a year and a bit after you join the course. And most people are unclear as to what they want to specialize in, even at that point. It really doesn't matter. A lot of people start with marketing, end up in fin jobs and do well. So the, the lines across divisions, across segments in, in an MBA are extremely blurred. It's not like how they are in engineering. So keep that in mind when you're, when, you're, when you're thinking about this. Don't bother about it. Don't worry about it. You don't have to worry about what you need to do at that point. Right? Move on to uh, how to prepare for, for CAT, for a, for a competitive exam and what kind of uh, context you need to do. To give you a little bit of flavor about this exam, so how the exam has changed. When, when, when we guys took CAT, I took my CAT in 2000. Uh, when we guys took CAT, CAT was a, the, the polar opposite of JE. Uh, our JE paper was a subjective paper. You had to write down lots of proofs, lots of uh, analysis. We need to, there was no multiple choice stuff. So you had to, even if you're saying true or false, you had to justify it. So we were uh, writing what we used to call as hardcore papers compared to what most of you guys have written. So, uh, whereas the CAT was a, the, the other end of the spectrum, it was a mass market exam. Anybody could go and have a, have a stab at it. It was all about multiplying, dividing really quickly, making sure that you could take your chances, make sure you could hit a B or a C really quickly. It was about speed, but how you could manage different sections, how you could, how you could approximate, how you could round off, how you could take your chances. It was about not gambling, but weighing the odds really quickly and managing that really well. Uh, just as how we guys, the, the, the alumni guys who graduated in 2000-2001 feel that the J has become simpler, the CAT has gone the other way around completely. Now, in these years, we guys used to have a question paper which used to have 170 questions you had to attempt in two hours. And you had to attempt at least 125 of them to have a shot at any of the IM. So you had you were just going bam, bam, bam. You had to take all your chances. It was, it was, you had to stay on top of your game and rattle along. 
uh, these days you have only 60 questions in this exam, so 30 per section. And you get two hours, 20 minutes for it, so two chunks of 70 minutes. And you, you, you attempt anywhere in the range of 18, 19 questions, you're in with a shout with the best colleges. So you get 18 minutes for 18 questions, you have to do it 70 minutes. So you give or take three and a half, four minutes per question compared to the era of one minute per question. So it, 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 the time aspect of it is completely gone. So keep that in mind. It is one thing that I see a great many students not acknowledge. And so the, the questions carry enormous depth on a relative basis. Don't compare it with your GE, but compared to what CAT was, what it is trying to test, the questions are tough. They're not easy. They're not questions which you will look and immediately know the method. Right? Uh, and this has to have has to reflect in how you prepare, both for quant and verbal. Uh, I see a great many students focusing on speed and, 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 and how to rush through bits and parts of the paper from very early on. And that, 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 that creates a weird problem when you're taking this exam. Uh, you have a, a for lack of a better phrase, I'm going to call it a difficulty plateau. I find a great many students who can, if there are 10 levels of difficulty, you find great many who can do up till 7 levels of difficulty really quickly. But they don't have it in them to ever hit 8, 9 or 10. And, and that's the biggest challenge in this exam. Why this exam is way more pressurizing the one than the one that we guys took, is you don't have anywhere to hide. And in, in our paper, 160 questions, you could bet your bottom dollar that anybody could attempt 100. So you get your get out clause. And if you, to give you an analogy, uh, it's like we guys are playing 2020. Right? So you have a Dale Stain bowling four overs. You will have some joke spinner bowling four overs. Where you, you talk him for 60 and you're fine. You still get your target. So your whole idea is around playing out the, leaving out the tougher ones and talking the easier ones. In many, many ways, your overall numbers could be higher but it's far easier as a challenge. You get places to hide. Right? Uh, the current era is like having stain bowling at one end, inside regimental bowling at the other end. So you don't have a get out of jail clause. So you have a series of questions which are all uniformly tough. And right? it seems like a very minor distinction that I'm making, but it's a dramatic overhaul of how you need to think of this paper. And uh, this thirst for speed totally creates a plateau. And, it, it, and I'm, I'm really struggling with all my students to kill their need for speed and to, to make sure that they have one more lap to go, something left in the tank. They run out of stuff in the lower level of difficulty because you're constantly running to try to do things that much quicker. You're, you're approximating and, and getting out of something. Whereas the question has something, some other catch in first principles. And a great many of the students, you'll see a paper and a really tough one, you'll keep leaving questions because you've been trained to skip questions. But by the time you're question number 20, you've attempted only four. That's because you've never geared yourself to do the tougher ones in any given topic. Right? And the massive, massive, massive advantage that IITNs have over everyone else, uh, I'm not saying this just to make you feel nice, uh, is that you've gone through the grind once. You've arguably cleared a tougher, more first principles driven exam. So there is no reason for you to fear that you, you cannot crack this level eight, level nine, level 10 difficult question. Great many people who took this, to take this exam just can't. They can't. They, no matter how much they train when they are 26, if the processor has not been tuned when they are 14, 15, it's going to be tough. It's going to be nearly impossible to crank up and really hit the juicy ones. Right? Which is why this this exam has become tougher. But great many IITNs have a have have very bipolar. They feel paranoid about this verbal section. I'll come to that. I'm not going to let that go because that's probably the one thing which is a reason for fear or slight apprehension for, for ID Janta. And they feel that this quant section is too easy, but don't have, have not created the bandwidth to nail that section. I find so many IITNs scoring 97th, 98th percentile in quant. Took two lakh people take this exam. A percentile is 2,000 people, give or take, depending on the exact number. So you're scoring 97th percentile. There are 6,000 people ahead of you in quant, which is a shame. If you scored 97th percentile in quant, you shouldn't have been preparing to write this exam. Or you're kidding yourself. You either froze in the exam or you're not ready. And so the, the, the benchmark for the quant section should be obscenely high. Lots of people set very modest benchmarks and that, that ties me up. And you shouldn't do that. And in, in, in many ways, you've been geared to crack the tougher ones. You, you, the, the, 
the idea behind preparation goes away so so keep that in mind i mean, i am not going to sit here and, and run a class and say how to make a distinction but keep one thing in mind you, you cannot afford to have a, a plateau in any topic for this exam I mean, that is very important a great many people focus on speed when they are preparing forget about that speed will come if you have the basics right if you know the right methods you'll be clearing this paper with time to burn and so don't don't worry about this you will finish your paper and still have a minute or two to go and so you don't rush when you are preparing and lose out questions because if people start selecting questions very early you, you you have a plateau beyond a certain level of difficulty you cannot approach a question in number theory or geometry or permutation combination and that is something you have to kill step by step and you you need to respect this exam as much as you did je uh, when we guys are preparing we we never did that uh, we did not pay the price because the exam was fine pleasant easy but you guys don't have the luxury because when we guys used to prepare uh, we guys used to start in august very grudgingly very grudgingly we guys used to start in august we never gave any bhav to this exam it was more or less an exam which you had to prepare because you wanted one more option nobody really cared about uh, getting into mba probably a group of 15 20 of us cared it was mostly underpinned by the fact that we were pretty poor at engineering so we needed something else so we were taking this exam but a great many never cared about this exam we would start in august september it, it, it didn't matter because a month month and a half to was enough to clear this exam it was a very quant heavy exam we would get out of jail in verbal and nail quant and you are getting a bunch of calls there were only five colleges back then but you were more or less guaranteed to get calls from them and then it depends on how you clear your interview so it was much easier you could pick up very late and then still catch up uh, but now the exam is tougher so make sure that your your initial phase of preparation you throw in a lot in in in, in first principles make sure you don't plateau out early okay. the second thing uh, which i see a big difference in the way we guys used to prepare and we guys use you guys prepare we focused a lot on intensity uh, these days a lot of preparation for for all of these exams is about uh, some imaginary quantum target and, and not about intensity and what i mean by intensity is uh, we would we would take only mock cats we never prepared for anything else we never used to what is there to learn in percentages and profits and you know the you know you know percentages profits speed time distance There's nothing in an aptitude exam that you should be unnerved by so we used to take mock cats but we used to throw in a lot into these uh, practice exams I, I somehow find that a great many people have enormous amounts of fatigue and, the, 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 and, 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 and you will have to work on that to nail that, don't underestimate it. I have seen great many people who are sharp on a question by question basis but just can't take a full exam because the, 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 the brain starts fading out after minute 60 or 70 and you'll, when you are going for this exam, you will sit there staring at a computer for an hour and a half and then start the exam. so the first time you will see some the first verbal question you been attempting this paper for you have been sitting there for 3 hours 15 minutes and then you have to read some passage which you don't get so if you, if you if you don't have stamina and intensity you're going to be in jail and that doesn't come overnight it might be the biggest stud in solving questions uh, but if you don't build stamina you're in trouble so build intensity very aggressively from very early on so set targets for yourself time targets for yourself and build them tell yourself that i'm going to do 20 minutes of this and then follow it up with 10 minutes of a puzzle and then 10 minutes of a, a passage without a break so you need to gear your body up and, and make sure that your your brain doesn't start shutting down it happens it, it should happen way lesser for students uh, but when, when i take the exams I, 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 i've taken the exam as a, as a trainer not as more times as a trainer than as a student uh, and i see that we guys are one year more relaxed so this is great so i don't have any pressure writing on it so it's fun which obviously helps Uh, but we are we are more savvy we know where to spend energy on where to conserve when to where to manage time which is score on autopilot uh, but the, the students don't have a sense of which questions can be done on autopilot and very perversely i find that 22 23 year olds getting tired way quicker than we guys do just get burnt out because you have not trained your mind to to last 2 hours 20 minutes 2 hours 20 minutes is tough it's tough right at the end of the session go to the room pick up some mock cat paper tell yourself 2 or 20 minutes without a single concentration gap it is tough it's, it's very difficult to concentrate on anything for more than 20 25 minutes and this will matter a lot so so build that intensity brick by brick brick by brick step by step it's very 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 important and that is something that that iitn should focus more on because 
the more you guys prepare the basics, the more you'll get bored. Because of this, don't don't prepare it in very conventional fashion, which which the textbook pre prescribes for everybody out there for CAT. So this is, you will get bored by it very soon. You will not solve 200 questions in profit and loss. You'll get bugged by it. So doing a mock CAT or creating an artificial intensity scenario for yourself is going to be the driver. So play to that. Make sure that your your stamina levels are extremely high. You can handle papers. One of the students we interact with, one of the, my classmates, uh, he realized that he was dropping off in the last 20 minutes, making lots of errors. So for a period of three days, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, he took two back-to-back -to -back mock exams. So he would, used to take exams for four hours at a stretch. He'd be drained out at the end of it, but it built his stamina. This is lots of trial and error that goes in. You'll have to fine-tune your preparation to get to scramble for any bit of advantage. It's not a genius tester exam, but it really tests smarts. So in many ways, like how JE is suited for its purpose, the cat is extremely well suited for its purpose. So don't underestimate that idea. They want to know whether you can take the right decisions and whether you know the right amount of basic grammar and basic math. So the decision making is built into what they're trying to test. So stamina and intensity is built into what they're trying to test. So it is, it is important to rate that component of the exam, otherwise you're never going to prepare for it. So that is something that gets consistently overlooked. Uh, don't let that happen. And so this is the, the, these are the two very important things from the overall paper I want to talk about. The, the final thing for, for a lot of uh, IT guys, I, I find a, a, a real big phobia for the verbal section. Right? So this is not English testing. Right? This is verbal based testing. You're more tuned to dealing with numbers and graphs and charts and and geometry and, and, and algebra. They're less tuned to reasoning when provided in a, in a grammar framework, in a, in a framework where words and sentences are used. But you, you, it's just a question of getting comfortable with that style of testing. <coughs> it's got nothing to do with your the way your mind operates. And so to, don't overanalyze this section and don't pick this up. There's absolutely no reason why somebody who's done BSA physics or BA psychology should be better than you in reading comprehension. There's every reason you can tell yourself why you should be better at quant than somebody who's done BA psychology. It's a drill. You've trained for your JE, you've cleared exams, you've, you write max exam for, for, for four semesters. You know what this is about. You, 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 so solving equations and writing them is second nature to you. So you should have a massive advantage. But what this somehow gets built in is that I'm good at quant somehow seems to Go alongside, I'm not that great at verbal. Right? So you should set a reasonably high mark for, for verbal as well, because there's a huge section called this logical reasoning sitting within there. You should nail that completely. And any verbal section, if you're, if you're from IT, your processor is fine, you should be cracking it. So to, to the biggest way to work on the verbal section, one thing is mental, where you set yourself very modest benchmarks. Uh, I, I was guilty of it. I was guilty of it throughout my preparation cycle. Uh, I used to be so paranoid of verbal. Uh, I still have a laugh whenever I think about it. We used to have papers for two hours, which are open-ended. I would always start with verbal. I would spend up to 50 minutes on it. Then I would go to the DI section and spend 45 minutes on it. I had the amazing confidence that in 25 minutes of quant, I could compete with pretty much anybody who was handling 40 minutes of quant. Uh, but I was so unsure of myself that I needed to bank another 10 minutes on verbal just to be sure that I was out of jail. And, and that completely kills your the way you approach the paper. And the, my best performance was when they finally decided that you had to take a quant and then a verbal. So now I can't shift time from one section to another. And therefore, I'm, I'm, I'm not worrying about that. I have to take quant separately and then verbal separately. And that, that only now I realized that I was kind of barking up the wrong tree. In the last two cats, I was very comfortable handling the verbal section. Because now is the first time that verbal is separate. I finished my quant and then I would go to my verbal. Otherwise, I would have shifted time from verbal to from quant to verbal and then try to manage the way I would do it. And, and don't have this phobia. Don't uh, try your best to kill that fear factor because that is going to be the biggest problem for your performance, where you're continuously worrying about uh, I need to offset this underperformance in verbal. I'm I am at a disadvantage in verbal. So you need to handle that. Make sure you set yourself ambitious benchmarks for verbal performance and don't tell yourself that I lay a quant find a par score in verbal and then go through. And great many IITNs finally clear this exam, uh, end up cracking verbal better than they do quant. So keep that in mind. So that is that is one thing to point. And as far as preparation for the verbal section goes, uh, there is, there, 
there's no science to it there's no fine tuning there's no grand preparation to it read read for an hour every day it will pay off it will pay off read good stuff don't read just chennai times start with chennai times but please read something else beyond that but the more you read the better you'll get there's no rockstar mantra to it people keep asking us how do i improve verbal performance in 3 months 4 months no matter what time frame you have you read your performance will get better there is nothing else to the verbal section then raw reading ability and stamina right so there are two or three styles of reading see all of them make sure you find something that you're comfortable with be very 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 old fashioned in your preparation don't fall into gimmicks territory don't worry about i'll do this i'll read the questions come back to this none of that works keep it very simple don't gamble don't take chances keep the core preparation part very old fashion very first principles driven don't look for any kind of shortcuts in quant verbal any of these for verbal read read for an hour every day it will help you with every different question every type of every category of question in verbal so it seems uh, very old fashion and boring to listen to that but that is the that is the crux of it and so keep keep that in mind final thing for your uh, interviews you go to the final stage when you clear this exam what you should probably think about is, is uh, so again take the interview part seriously uh, I, i when i cleared my cat and i had to take my interviews so guy used to come to hostel and he done he ran a bunch of mock interviews with us we were abysmally phenomenally poor at handling interviews because we didn't uh, give it the respect it deserved we would we would answer very flippantly so standard stuff like tell me about yourself we would we would rant on and on and on about random uninteresting stuff i mean an interview is a, is a, is a place where they give you an opportunity to make a pitch for yourself and they say look i've seen your numbers now talk to me for 10 minutes just tell me that you are beyond the cv and numbers and very often you go into the interview expecting to be drilled and questioned so so prepare very aggressively for that especially for typical questions like why mba you've done your engineering you've been you've done well in engineering so why should you change track now that's a very standard question we did every all of us get that so don't think that they have suddenly honed in on you to ask this question everybody gets that question fine right? but but make sure that you you are well prepared to answer the standard things do not underestimate the interview i think a lot of iitians uh, finally miss out because they are very poor at interviewing very very poor mostly because you don't prepare uh, there is this uh, chip on the shoulder response you feel like i'm from iit like why how will i not ace this uh, the, the conference is good but but the, the proportion of iitians in in the iims has not increased and so not like iitians are giving rock star performances now compared to 15 years ago uh, most numbers suggest that they are going back it's it's partly reflection of reality that the iitian performance is probably not spectacular uh, partly policy the the iims have decided that they have they need to create they need to have a diverse pool uh, and and within engineering they realize that uh, half their engineers are iitians either with or without experience so they want to make sure that their batch does not have an engineering bias and further does not have an iit bias so the the the, the odds are stacked against you as far as the final selection process goes so keep that in mind so you need to you are effectively competing with fellow iitians for a few seats right so so don't walk up with iit swagger because you 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 anybody else who you are competing competing with is from iit you are effectively competing for a subset of those seats which are more or less reserved for iitians and so so don't expect your iit card to bail you out if anything it's a disadvantage not because of what you can bring to the table but because you are the incumbent and in, in your mba selection diversity matters uh, don't get into the merits and demerits of diversity fine that's not that's not for us to debate now and it's very distracting i hear so many people saying uh, just because i'm from iit they are holding it against me live with it live with it there's nothing else you can do you, you that's a set of rules that have been presented to you if you have the ability to have some power to change it or govern it at some point of time in the future have a stab at it but right now that is external it's an externality which you have to accept but do, don't expect your iit card to bail you out either in an interview or for getting a call it won't if anything it's a negative keep it in mind it's a big negative to be in from an iit when you're writing cat so you need to crack this exam to be called and a great many of these guys the great many of the iims uh, i am psyche has now is this part of the idea thing they are god's gift to mankind which is there in the selection panels fine so you you're going to start off on the back foot you'll have to tell them that you are good 
and that has not gotten to your head. And that's a tough, tough challenge in an interview. And you have to pick yourself up, not really look like a jerk while you're doing it. Fine. So, but remember that because you're from this place, the odds are stacked against you as far as the final process is concerned. So keep that in mind because you'll need to manage your interview really well. You can't be a geeky guy who's standing up and delivering. You can't be over prepared and over cooked so that you come across really, you think you're coming across polished, but you're coming across prepped. And that's very annoying as an, as an interviewer. So you need to walk that line really well when you're doing the final process. Last bit, we'll stop another two, three minutes. Uh, when we guys graduated, the, the, your, your CGPA and your backgrounds, none of that mattered. For you guys, it will matter. Don't tell yourself that uh, I'm going to do an MBA, whether I'm 6.9 or 7.4 or 8.3, it does not matter. It matters, it matters even after you have experience. For the top four, five colleges, now the, the rules for uh, the pressure they put on all round ability and, and, a, and a consistent track record is extremely high. So I am Ahmedabad, Bangalore, Indore, Kodi Kod, all of them have extremely lofty benchmarks for academic performance. And this includes everything, your 10th standard, 12th standard, your under graduation and anything else you have to do after that. There are no points for a great JE rank, so keep that in mind. And so, so you might have sacrificed something to have a stab at JE, that's not going to be in your favor, so keep that in mind. So you, when you're when you're when you're if you're in your fourth semester or fifth semester, don't sacrifice your academics to have a stab at CAT. Don't switch off. We guys did that. Uh, I knew I was pretty average at engineering. I knew very early on that I was going to have a go at MBA. I knew very clearly that I I would have a decent shot at CAT, and, and I switched off. I switched off more than once during my engineering. Thankfully, I didn't live to regret it too much. Uh, I finished in four years. Uh, but it, 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 there is bigger pressure on you. There's more pressure on you guys to make sure that your academic record does not have any any holes. So the, you you might get hundred percentile, but if you have a seven point nine, they might not call you. So you might be this genius who has missed out on one course, but you will end up paying the price for it. So please don't take your eyes off the ball as far as your academic record is concerned. Uh, keep your head above water. The bare minimum. Uh, Ten years ago. Uh, a flunk here and a flunk there wouldn't matter. Now it does. A great m lot of my friends have gotten to I am Calcutta and Bangalore after finishing their engineering in five years. Right? So, so a, f a phenomenally poor performance in engineering still wouldn't hurt you. Now you, you don't have a I'd have a chance. If you're, if you're really screwed up in engineering, you don't have a shot at any of the IEMs unless you have six years of experience and you can you have a you, you everything else is forgotten and there's something else going for you and therefore they have to call you something like that. Otherwise, you, you need to keep your academic record without gaps, without holes. Okay. So that's about it. I didn't want to take too much of your time. Uh, I, I'm sure you have some kind of questions. Shoot. Sure. Okay. So you said the academic record is important. So I have both. Ahmedabad and I am Kodi Code and Indoor. It is huge. So there, there are some <coughs> CGPAs and 12 standard marks where you can almost straight away say that A, I, N, K are tricky. Cal is more cat friendly. Still have I am Calcutta. I am Lucknow is very cat friendly. Uh, see, the, the rule is very stupid, to put it bluntly. They should not have a rule which is so, so onerous, so face makes such a heavy price on one mistake which happened long back. It also does not give room for uh, normalizing. So what what a 90th person, 90% 90 in, uh, in one board might be worse or better than 95 or 85 in some other board. We all know that. Uh, within the CBSC board, 93% in one year is dramatically better than the same percent in some other year. We know that also. Uh, but this is a system they have chosen. So uh, A, I and K are the trickiest. Ahmedabad, Indore, Kodi Code. Uh, some of you might, might realize that it's a zero chance. Uh, but Cal is still extremely cat sensitive. Uh, and when we guys graduated, there were probably only four colleges that you would go to. Most of us didn't apply for Indoor or Kodi Kod uh, because they, they were new back then and we didn't want to go there. So we had Ahmedabad, Bangalore, Calcutta, Lucknow. That's it. Uh, but now, leaving out these four or five, there are probably another seven or eight good colleges like Jamalal, Bajaj, XLR. You can hit those. Uh, the, 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 if, you, if you get it from here, you don't have 100 colleges to choose from, from IDM. But you, you don't have just four, you probably have 12 or 13 to dabble with. So if you lose out on three or four because of something that is already done and dusted, you still have the remaining seven or eight. There's more pressure on your cat, no doubt about it. But it's not a deal breaker. If it's one gap, 
or two caps even, you can live with it. But some colleges, you might already be at zero chance. And the, the three most difficult colleges to get in, uh, if you have a gap in your, you know, somewhere something is not being spot on, Ramdabad, Indore, Kodikot, Bangalore coming close by. Uh, the others are fine. Indore and Kodikot are trying this new fancy thing. They're going rating profile way higher than CAT. Uh, my gut feel is it's going to come back and bite them. Uh, but for the, uh, till they realize it, we have, we have nothing to do, so we'll probably sit in. But indoor and code code are extremely cat sensitive. For indoor, their cat is just a cutoff, nothing else. They don't care whether you've got 99.1 or 99.8 or 99.9. For, for, for code code, they, in their composite score, they don't take your cat score, but they take your cat percentile, which basically says that is useless, that number is useless. So. Uh, both these guys are saying, look, if you're, if you're okay, if you're above 90th, I'll look at everything else. Which I think is very silly. My opinion, counts for nothing. So, if there are a couple of, bunch of colleges where you're, where you're killed straight away, but there are still, give or take seven or eight very good colleges that you still have a shoot. Just one more thing. When they say, they give, say, 20% weightage to CAT, mm -hmm. so does that mean that uh, the person with the lowest score gets the zero and highest score gets 20, or then everybody gets 70, 80, 90? 17, 18, 19. So they, 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 some of these colleges go with your CAT score. Your CAT score is a score out of 450. They translate it, scale it down to 20 and take that, which is still fair because the difference between 99.9 .9 percentile and 99 percentile on that rating is still 100 marks. So still translated to 20, that's a good chunk and every mark will matter. Because it's just, your cutoff will be from 75 to 77. So everybody is above 75, so that will matter. For some places, they scale down your percentile. That means CAT is useless. So you'll have to see that. But leaving out indoor and code code, no processes, that's silly. Indoor and code code are essentially saying CAT score counts for nothing. If you're above 90 or above 92 or above 85, some very modest benchmark, you're in based on everything else. So they don't care whether it is 87 or 99.9. Right? But it's only indoor and code code that are this bad. On the, on the CAT spectrum. CAL is extremely CAT heavy, which is why CAL shortlist disappears sooner. In the sense that you, if you get below 99.65, it's impossible to get a CAT shortlist. CAL, because CAL will call everybody from 100 to 99.65. So they have 400 seats, they'll call 900 people, that's half a percent. They'll find some other category for something different to come account for the last 100. Everything else will come from the top one third of a percentile. So CAL shortlist are very CAT sensitive. You're, you're going for CAT. Okay. Any other questions? You can ask politically incorrect questions. <laughs> the advantage you have with an alumnus. So if I have this CGPA, if I get this CAT score, do I stand a chance? You can still do that. this normalization and all that, forget about it, it's useless. So the process works, it's statistically accurate. It's the, the, they have not shared the algorithm, but from whatever anecdotal data I have, I can tell you that the normalization process is fair, it works. So, so don't don't keep that as a, your buffer. Don't tell yourself, look, I can always, maybe the normalization doesn't work. And that's again an externality. The normalization works to a T. Statistic, the database they have is immense. The guys who are running it, they know their stuff. So they're saying 99.6 percentile. That pretty much means 99.6 percentile. That's not wrong. A anything can have a statistical error built in. That probably happens. So, you, but it's not an incorrect software. Don't sit and, and happily pass judgment on a statistical process. Just test it and prove it correct. So forget about it. No normalization does not exist. You go take the exam, you do well, you get good percentile. Forget about that. Uh, there is a big difference between, uh, see ABC uh, are, are big, Ahmedabad, Bangalore, Calcutta are good. Uh, Lucknow probably comes close immediately after that. Indoor and Kodi Code just after that. The six new IEMs, they are not in the top 20 in the country. They are not there. Whether they will ever get there, we don't know. They just have the tag. The, 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 the ability of the brand IEM to stretch itself to, to this kind of size, we don't know. When some of the newer IITs are studying. So, it, 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 we don't know how much they will be able to stretch. The, the economy is good. 
this year is bad but the economy is otherwise good like the, the size of india's economy can take in another we can go up to top 60 as far as mba colleges are concerned and these guys will feature somewhere there uh, and people are willing to try their luck at college rank 18 16 17 20 because the the, the payoffs are still good so they, they will survive and reach there but if you're looking at foreign placements and really juicy jobs and all that it's, it's ahmedabad bangalore etc and then immediately after that lucknow even indoor and kohli code are, are are yet to break through they don't have a have, have, they don't they've not yet built a big brand do i need an mba to go up the ladder or <laughs> um you don't need an mba so plain and simple answer you don't need an mba definitely not uh your your you, you can go up technically far more with, with not far more but definitely as far as with an mba if you if you're in a good job in a good place the the scope for doing more tech related stuff in india is extremely high now uh, earlier on some of the industries had built in flaggers uh, now that is we are, we are pretty much global so if you if you're if you're in any branch of engineering you get a good job and you you plug ahead with it you do a good job you can reach the, the highest point in that career opportunity that stream in india uh, most of the sectors are globally integrated and jobs are slightly more fungible across across countries nation boundaries all of that you don't require it and uh, the career choice is more uh, a question of to i am i kind of person who wants to get better and better technically is that what gives me the kick or at some point of time do i do i feel like i'm the guy who can branch out and do two other things rather than and then that so it's a very classic depth versus breadth thing lots of guys who are temperamentally engineers uh, and they would feel like fish out of water doing an mba in the sense that you you're very very comfortable trying to do one build one set of skill sets and make it better and better rather than handle people and do this and that and and, and all these fancy other management paraphernalia but there are some guys who 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 might might either hit a plateau and not acquire great depth in one any one thing and might be suited to managing three different things they want to know how a product makes money and then how it is created they want to know what is the target audience so if if you if you incline that way then mba will take you the ne- next few few more steps but this there's a slightly wider held belief that with an mba you can go farther than with with technical education definitely not definitely not in india you have lots of scope to be a good engineer and hit hit the heights there is scope even even as an entrepreneur i see a lot of my friends who are who are who have a who technically way more gifted than i am they they run their companies way better than i do uh, they 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 build products way better than i do because they have a skill set which is slightly more unique than i can bring to the table you you are you are building a company you want a usp you want something to be distinct which nobody else can offer and the more depth you have in any one thing Uh, the better you can introduce that so the the, your, the way you can build your expertise around technical knowledge is probably on stronger ground than building an architectural competence over a string of things so, so i wouldn't say it's, it's tough to it, it, an mba is definitely not a requirement to go for it okay definitely not <laughs> it is an embellishment of the basic engineering degree that it makes a person extend their It, it 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 helps especially for for a set of people in fact it helps a lot in fact i found my feet uh, individually in 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 the b school than here because i was uh, i i had a certain set of skill sets i was very uh, uh, quant strong uh, in india there's a bias at least in, at least back then it was very strong you're good in math you should do engineering but i i i did not have an engineering mindset i i, I did not have the the keenness or, or the attention to detail that that engineers try more i couldn't i i i wouldn't get kicks out of dismantling a fan and, and putting it back again it was it was unnerving for me but some of my engineering friends loved that so you know, on holiday they would completely rip apart a cycle and put it back again so th- there's a certain mentality that makes you want to do it and makes you equipped to do it i, I didn't have that I, I, and mba I, i learned different ways where i could i could handle a business analyze a business see where it could make money where which kind of business model is viable which is not the my day job was to buy and sell stocks so i had to rate companies so i i i learned that 
and then I was I found my feet in many ways in in an NB school than I did here. I but for some people it can be to have the opposite effect as well. It is more constrained. People are are comfortable delivering on one set of tasks. And I noticed that guys who are technically sound, they do pick up the people skills and on all the soft skills they do pick up. It's a I don't want to say engineers are uh, uh, cannot become great businessmen. World over, they proved that they can. And I have wonderful examples. I went to the research park today. The one of my juniors is running a company. He's running it way better than I can imagine any MBA classmate of mine running it. So he he understands the product. He holds up. He has a certain passion towards what he's creating. And, and he's not just somebody who's bringing people together and putting them together. His the, his passion translates to his team. And I I I find a lot of uh, MBAs not able to do that. That they don't understand the, the, the core delivery. So something where you are creating something and you get the core of it really well, then you, your energy translates. So and when people have to run companies, they learn the things. They know that I can't be a genius in one type of understanding and build a company. I have to make sure that four other guys get at least halfway through where I am so that I can I can build more. So they they learn that. So I I, I wouldn't degrade. You can become a great businessman without doing an MBA. But it does round you off in many ways. I was very raw after my engineering. I learned a lot of new things in my MBA. So I'm, I'm very thankful for my MBA. Uh, but I don't think it's a requirement. Thanks a lot. Maybe yeah, I'll just. <laughs> we have a memento. Okay. Okay, so thinking about GMAT, you want to know the difference by any chance? Is there something that anybody? Yeah. Very quickly. The GMAT is the entrance exam for business schools abroad, globally. Uh, in India, GMAT is the entrance exam for executive MBA, your one year MBA. The biggest school that selects based on GMAT in India is ILB, ILB Hyderabad. Uh, all the IMs select via GMAT for their executive MBA programs, for which you need five or six years of experience, depending on which IM you are going for. As far as the GMAT score is valid for five years, and a great many colleges in the US have some two plus two programs where you can write the GMAT, get an admit, work for two years, and then join there. So that option is available. Uh, and, 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 and an MBA in the US is, has got Definitely, you have access to a way better job market than you do when you are in India. Mm -hmm. So it's still a very viable option. It's not frightfully expensive. It's still going to cost you twice or thrice as much as an MBA from from the IIMs. But it's given the state of the economy, it's not an outlandish amount. Most people have have that kind of a resource to get to a bank that gives you a loan. So that that is that is a given. Uh, exam wise, the GMAT again that's the same thing. Quant and verbal. Uh, the GMAT verbal is tougher. CAT quant is tougher. That's a starting point. If you're planning to take both, uh, do one after the other, don't prepare parallel because there's a style difference between one and the other. CAT believes that computation needs to be tested. GMAT believes that only concepts need to be tested. What is the kick in making you multiply 46.5 and 96.2? And so there's a style difference when you're going into an exam hall, you need to make that adjustment. So take one and then start with the other. Uh, will it help? Definitely it'll help if you take both. Whatever you take, the second exam you take second, you'll be in much stronger grounding. You'd have gone through the drill once. And if you feel like you're probably slightly weaker in verbal and you want to do both, then it definitely helps to take GMAT and then and then take CAT because just like how CAT tests quant really well, wonderfully well from, from basics from first principles, GMAT is still better at testing verbal than CAT is. So uh, it's such a good exam to prepare for. 80% uh, of the preparation overlaps. GMAT verbal is tougher than CAT verbal. CAT quant is tougher than GMAT quant. You'll have to make an adjustment for style also on top of that. Uh, the GMAT score is valid for five years. So they're saying, look, I've got a job in a good place. If I get CAT this year, great. But otherwise, I'm in my final year. Might as well finish this exam so that I have my options open three years from now. Most colleges that you have to apply to with your GMAT will require you to have at least three years experience. So you're practically taking this exam saying, look, I'm going to think about this option three years from now, not, not, not straight away. Uh, but in, in your final year, if you have taken CAT, you have time in Feb, March. So you will. You'll be in your eighth semester. There's nothing to do. So take the exam, get it out of the way. That's it.
Thanks a lot. I had a, I had a good time. Thank you.